Hello friends, my name is Elle and this is David, our Director of Grow Students Curriculum. And we are here to give you a deep dive into the spring quarter of Volume 5 of Grow Students. What we're going to do in this quarter is we're going to look at our discipleship activity and we're also going to look at our event for this quarter. Uh, so we're going to look big picture and then also get really specific too. Yes, and so if you're a Grow user, this would be a great time for you to get ahead on these discipleship activity and this event. For your ministry, maybe you've already planned these ahead of time, but this is just a little deeper dive just to give you some more intricate logistics for these two things. So here's how it's going to go down this deep dive. First, we'll give you a overview of the discipleship activity, and then we'll give you some tips on the discipleship activity. And then we're going to give you an overview of the event for this quarter, and then we'll give you some tips for this quarter. Okay, so first we're gonna take a look at the discipleship activity for this quarter, which is called the Break Trail Experience. Uh, if you are also using our teaching content, then it you'll see that it kind of corresponds with the Break Trail series, which is our Easter slash Jesus series. Uh, and the discipleship activity for this quarter aligns with our focus in our discipleship strategy, which is spending time with God. Uh, we always focus on this spiritual habit around Easter time in the spring. Uh, and the reason for that is because there's a great time to focus on like spiritual disciplines of all kinds, prayer, uh, reading scripture, fasting, all of that kind of good stuff can live in this quarter. So that's why we focus on this year. Uh, so David, walk us through this activity. What is it about? What are we doing? Yes, I'm so excited that we get to do a Stations of the Cross activity, which is what this Break Trail experience is. It's a Stations of the Cross experience uh, for students. And so like I was saying, this uh, spiritual habit is spending time with God. And so your students will actually get to go and walk through 14 different stations, or we call them trail markers, because that's kind of like the theme. It's a very hiking, outdoorsy theme activity. And so your students will get to go through those, each of those 14 stations and just do very unique things that will connect them to God in ways they may have not have tried before, like tangible ways of praying, reading the scriptures in different ways, and then just a lot of different uh, hands-on activities for students. So just a great experience for them. Um, a little history on the, on the Stations of the Cross. There are 14 of them because there are different 14 stations that Jesus walked through leading up to his death on the cross. And so students will kind of walk with Jesus in those final moments, but also be able to tangibly do some really creative work with um, their spiritual lives. And so this will be a great way to engage your students in that way. Just some few logistics I want to throw out there just as you're thinking about planning this. Set a time frame for this event. Um, multiple ways for you to do it. You can do it as a special event do it, you do a weekly program or spread out over different weeks. It's up to you. You can kind of do it how you want to and how you want it fits your ministry best and how you think it fits best in your context. Um, choosing the right space, obviously, you want to do a large room, maybe classrooms for each of the stations, or even do it outdoors if the weather's nice where you're at, you can do that. And of course, setting up the stations, we've got that all in there, the documents for you, but just a great way for you to plan, um, have a lot of interactive kids. And I think it's going to be great for students, like I said, um, getting to engage them in different tangible ways for their spiritual lives, different ways of praying, reading the Bible, all that sort of thing. I think it's going to be a fantastic event. Yes, I love it. This is going to be so great. Um, a lot of times kids just don't know how to pray or like really engage with God in different ways. So this will give them some like tangible skills that they can use. Uh, a couple things I wanted to mention is just think about the difference between your middle schoolers and your high schoolers when you're doing this event. Uh, depending on your group size, you might have them all in the same room going through this activity at once. That is totally fine. Uh, or you might think this might be better if I split them up for this one. Either way is cool. Uh, just a couple tips. If you're doing middle schoolers, only or you know you're combining it just remember your middle schoolers are probably going to need like a volunteer nearby to guide them through the experience uh maybe even just logistically trying to get them to go to the stations in order would be useful uh but also just kind of helping keep control of the room because this is it's not supposed to be like necessarily a somber kind of event but it should be something where you know kids aren't being super distracting for kids who are trying to engage so you're going to want to keep your volunteers close to make sure your middle schoolers are not running wild as they are prone to do. Uh, your high schoolers, on the other hand, are probably able to walk through this without a ton of volunteer supervision. Uh, in this case, maybe your volunteers like are kind of stationed only at the stations and kind of welcome the high schoolers as they show up. You, they might not need to like actually escort them, but you know, you know your students best, you know what they need. So just keep that in mind, keep the developmental uh, differences in mind as you're planning this so that you get the most out of it and it's not too chaotic.
All right, so here's just a few tips on how to make this experience really, really great. David, what do you got? All right, our first tip for the break trail experience is do the experience any way you want. Like I've said before, you can do this experience any way you want to do it, depending on your church size, how many kids you have in your youth group, um, your location, your accessibility to different places and settings and all that sort of thing. Um, so if you need some help, you can do this with your volunteers first, maybe with your greater church staff, and just kind of run it with them and see how that works. Um, you can also take this online and do it as a social media. So take some of the content that we've given you and use those questions and post them online and have your students engage in that way. If you're still doing online ministry, um, this experience can be done in multiple different ways. You use your creativity, you know your context the best. We've given you the framework and the guidelines to do this and you take it and run with it how you please. I love it. Love the freedom to customize. That's the best. Uh, tip number two, do this in small groups. Uh, you can take that a couple different ways. Sure, you could literally do this in small groups and have your small group leaders kind of lead uh, just their group. Um, but, you know, depending on how you're set up, if you have regular small groups that like always meet together, uh, have them travel to the different stations together as a group. Uh, that will kind of help forge those small group relationships a little bit better. Uh, if you don't have small groups, you can think about this in terms of grade uh, or just whatever makes sense. Like however you can kind of get uh, like a, a smallish group of students together. Maybe that's by school, by gender, whatever that looks like. Uh, but just think about how to get them into like consistent groups and have them go through that experience together. Yes. And then tip number three is pair the challenge with the Break Trail series. I was already talked about this a little bit, but we have written a series called Break Trail to go along with this discipleship activity called the Break Trail Experience. And they go hand in hand very well, just because if you've already decorated your space for the Break Trail series, you can use those same decorations for the Break Trail Experience. And so they're meant to go together. Um, We've given you a lot of content in that Break Trail series, six weeks worth of content and sermons. So feel free to kind of divide and stick together some sermons and then maybe take a week to do this one week. Uh, but essentially it'll fit very well just because these stations are talking about, like I said, the leading up to Jesus' death and then the Break Trail, experience, uh, Break Trail series is uh, all about the Easter story before and after Jesus' death and resurrection. So this will fit just well with the Easter season. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe you can make it a whole church event as well and do it with your whole church. I've seen that happen with some stations of the cross where the church just opens up for the day and people come in and out. So you can do that with your youth group. But yeah, this is going to be a great time to do it during the Easter season for uh, your students and for your church. Love it. And actually, if you do want to kind of uh, make this an all church experience, Grow has actually made that very easy for you. So tip number four is get aligned with your adult ministry. And actually, you can do this with kids ministry as well. So in Grow Kids, we provide another Stations of the Cross experience that is kid friendly it is called uh, Crossway Station. And then in our adult curriculum, which is called Grow Groups, it's designed for adult small groups. We also have a Stations of the Cross experience there that is adapted from this experience. Uh, and so in the adult curriculum in Grow Groups, uh, this is meant to be done by one individual small group. Uh, so the idea is that the group would uh, lead it, either the group leader would lead through all the different stations or maybe assign different stations to different group members and have the different group members uh, lead different experiences for the whole group. Uh, it's a pretty cool uh, take on this that works really, really well for adult small groups. So check that out if your church is using Grow Groups. Uh, and yeah, friends, that's kind of how that works. So that is the Break Trail experience, the discipleship activity for the spring, which focuses on spending time with God. Uh, but now let's take a little detour and we're gonna talk about our event for this quarter. Okay, so let's talk about that event. Uh, every year in Grow Students, we actually give you a complete retreat event kit, like a weekend retreat. Uh, we do that in the spring, um, although you can use it, of course, anytime you want to. Some people use it as like a fall kickoff. People use it all, of, all over the place. Uh, but we put it specifically in the spring because we feel like that is a great time of year uh, to challenge kids to go a little bit deeper in their faith, which is why we talk about spending time with God during that quarter. So uh, a spring retreat is a great chance to kind of like help kids reset uh, and to really just kind of go a little bit deeper in the relationships with others and also the relationship with God. Uh, so what we give you every year is we give you a kind of a generic uh, spring retreat guide that teaches you how to do a retreat if you've never done one before. Uh, but then we also give you a series. So that's really what we're going to focus on in this deep dive. So David, walk us through it. What are we doing? 
Yes, I'm excited to talk about this teaching series. I think it'll be great and it fits perfectly for a retreat uh, setting. And so this series that goes along with this retreat is called Hidden in Plain Sight. And so we're all talking about boldness and kind of being unashamed and just standing up for our faith and being bold about our faith, which I think is a perfect uh, theme for a retreat where students are kind of excited about their faith and eager about their faith and want to learn more and usually come off pretty excited about their faith afterwards. So before I get into the big ideas real quick, I do want to give a disclaimer about how we format our big ideas in a retreat. So you're, you might ask why we only have two big ideas or kind of maybe one big idea for the whole retreat. And let's just think about a retreat. We're going to have kids. There's a lot of energy, maybe no sleep or a little sleep or very like a couple hours of sleep for both volunteers and kids. And so we kind of want to just make sure we are focusing on a central theme and a central topic during the retreat. And so that's why when I go through these themes, you'll kind of see, oh, they're kind of similar, but they're different at the same time. But we just want us to make sure we just give the greatest impact when we're teaching at a retreat and just really stick with what we're teaching with. So without further ado, here's kind of what the breakdown of the retreat goes to be like this. So Friday night and Saturday morning, we kind of pair it into 24 hour segments. And so the, the big ideas for those nights and morning is don't hide and be unashamed. And that's both for Friday night and Saturday morning. Friday night, you'll talk about Peter and the denial of Jesus and then his restoration. And then to contrast the Peter story on Sunday, Saturday morning, you'll talk about Bartimaeus and how he chases after Jesus. And so that's Friday night and Saturday morning. And then we go into Saturday night and then Sunday morning. The big ideas for those days are don't hide, decide to shine. And we'll talk about being salt and light in the earth. And then um, to wrap up the retreat, we'll talk about what Paul says about living the unashamed Christian life. So very much so about hitting in plain sight, just kind of being very bold about their faith. Um, I think, again, this will be a great uh, theme for a retreat. Love it. Yeah. And uh, kind of the way, if you've never done a retreat from Grow Students before, the way that we recommend doing it, although, of course, you can take the content and use it however you want, uh, is we typically recommend doing like a big session in the evenings. Uh, and so you'll see that the teaching for the evening sessions are uh, kind of in our typical like sermon format. They're a little lengthier. Uh, whereas in the mornings, we actually recommend doing more of like a shorter devotional time uh, because, you know, kids probably have not slept and it is early, and they are not ready for another session quite yet. So uh, we kind of give you something a little bit shorter, but still really, really great to kind of help drive all of that home. Uh, but of course, if you want to take that and bulk it up some more and do another full session because you think your students can handle it, go for it. You can do whatever you want. That is just the, the whole vibe of grow. Do what you want. We're going to give you some stuff to play around with, and then you follow your heart and do your thing. Uh, so there you go. We give you all the things that you need to plan a successful retreat, hopefully. And if there's something missing, let us know. All right, so uh, let's just give you a few tips on how to make this event really awesome. David, what do you have? Yes, our first tip for this is focus on relationships. Um, so in my youth pastor days, I just remember trips and retreats being the time that you get to focus on the relationships with your students. And it's just great opportunities for you to develop deeper relationships with your students or possibly create new ones when they bring friends on the trips. Um, but just focus on relationships. And because we've given you the teaching series, the planning, everything that you need to like, all the hard, heavy lifting of the retreat, you can now focus on building relationships with your students. And so that's our first tip for this retreat. Yes. And then kind of similarly, um, tip number two is be intentional about your volunteers, meaning the ones that you bring on this retreat, make sure that they're people who are relational people uh, and preferably already have relationships with your students, uh, especially the ones who are going to be like staying or like leading like small group conversations with students. Uh, don't throw them in with a stranger. That's going to kind of throw some things off uh, relationally. And you have a very limited window of time here. So you really want to uh, give students leadership who they already know so that they are ready to open up and ready to have uh, some really good discussion. So be intentional about who you recruit for this. Definitely. And then tip number three is customize your own schedule. Like we've been saying this entire deep dive, you can do what you want with the content that we've given you. Uh, we've even given you um, the ability to do this at homes. So if you're not able to go on a retreat um, or if you're not able to go off location, you can do it at home, at your church, anything like that. Just customize your schedule. You know what's best for your youth group. You know what's best for your students. You know how the traditions go in your youth group. Maybe you can add in something that you guys do like a talent show every every Saturday night or you do a senior speak on a Sunday morning or something like that or you do a communion or, or, or something like that. But just customize your schedule. Have the ability to make this retreat the best possible for your youth group. 
And then tip number four is have your volunteers go through some kind of safety training or abuse awareness training. Uh, the reason for this is because this is an overnight experience. Uh, whether you're doing this at like a retreat center or you're doing it in host homes or however you want to do it, uh, we are talking about an overnight experience here, most likely. Uh, so if that's the case, you want to make sure your volunteers are like extra prepared and extra trained just to make sure that like they feel comfortable, that parents can feel comfortable dropping students off to know that your volunteers have gone through some specific training on how to keep kids safe. Uh, so make sure you do that. And if your church hasn't done that recently, this is a great chance to bring that up uh, church-wide about what that uh, those kind of policies and procedures and training actually looks like. Yes. And then our final tip, tip number five, is use this retreat to build momentum. And what I mean by that is that whether you do this in the fall or in the spring or in the summer or whenever you do this retreat, use this as a time where you're gathering your youth group together. You're building all this spiritual excitement about, you know, this teaching series and you're going into this year or the rest of the year and just use the momentum that you create at this retreat to kind of give you the force to go through the rest of the year, you know, engaging with your students, especially the ones that maybe be coming for the first time to your to the retreat. Or maybe you have students that show up that, you know, haven't been to youth group in a while and they show up at retreat so you can get to engage with them and connect with them and get them plugged in into the in your ministry. Also, a great way to build momentum is to get your students to plan the retreat with you. So we've given you the guidelines to plan, but also partner with students and see what they want to do, see what, if they have any unique ideas for the retreat. That just gives them some more ownership and gets them more excited about the retreat and allows them to invite their friends to come to the retreat because they feel excited about the retreat. So therefore, they want all their friends to come to the retreat. And that's a win for you because you have more people that show up for your retreat, more time, more chances to get new relationships. So use this retreat to build momentum. Love it. Uh, and friends, that is all we have for you for this deep dive. Uh, we've covered a discipleship activity. We've covered an event. Uh, but we also, in a separate deep dive, are going to cover uh, some teaching content for this quarter. So make sure you check out the other deep dives for this quarter as well to make sure that you have all of the information you need to make everything really, really amazing that we give you inside of Grow Curriculum. Uh, and as always, we would love to see your pictures, watch your videos, hear your stories, and also hear your creative ideas and how you made this your own. So please share those with us. You can do that in our Facebook group. You can find us at Stuff You Can Use, a youth ministry community. Uh, and before our next deep dive, we'll see you over there. Bye. Bye.